Good morning. Welcome to Christian Church of Lemon Grove. My name is Dustin. I'm uh, honored to lead uh, worship this morning. Um, let's let's all stand together and worship the Lord. I guess. Heavenly Father, thank you for this time. I pray that you would help us to honor and glorify you and praise you for your mighty, mighty hand upon each one of our lives. In the name of your son, Jesus, we pray. Amen. All my words fall short.
You may be seated. Good morning. Welcome to Christian Church 11 Grove. If you don't know who I am, my name is Chris. I'm one of the pastors here. We're so glad you chose to worship with us today uh, to join us uh, on this Lord's Day. It's a great day to be here, to be in community with you, to worship God. Um, uh, we just want to let you know, if this is your first Sunday with us, whether you're here in person or online, uh, we just want to say a special welcome to you. Uh, if We have a special gift for you if this is your first Sunday, and if you're here in person, you can get that um, out at the uh, in the gym at our Welcome Center. Uh, we'd love to uh, just kind of get connected with you, let you know what's going on in the life of our church. Uh, and for those of you that are come here all the time, you know the best way to do that is through our weekly email update. Um, also, you can see in your row or at... Uh, your table there, there's connect cards. Um, if you wouldn't mind filling that out, letting us know you're here today, letting us know um, who, you know, if, if there's new information that we can get from you, new email address, things like that, so we can send out our weekly email update to you. Um, you'll also see on there there's a QR code, and that if you take out your smartphone and you use the camera, you'll download our church app from that QR code. Our church app has a lot of great features on it. It's got a prayer wall. It's got uh, our upcoming calendar events. It's got... A uh, free Bible on there, all kinds of great things. And so uh, if you have the opportunity, just go ahead and we recommend you do that. It's a great way to stay in touch with us. Keep us connected. The bulletin is on there. If you're looking for a bulletin, it's on our uh, app. And so um, those are just some of the great things that our app features, and uh, we just hope that you would take the time to download that. Uh, there's a few things going on in the life of our church that we want you to be aware of, that we want you to get connected to. And first and foremost, today is actually our Volunteer Appreciation Sunday. And so we're going to be having a lunch today after services. And right now, because we are in the uncomfortable series, I'm going to ask everyone who has ever volunteered in any way whatsoever in this church, whether that's been in kids ministry, youth ministry, uh, food ministry, uh, you know, whatever, I don't worship team, I don't care what it is, teaching Sunday school, whatever thing you've ever done to volunteer, if you wouldn't mind, just stand up right now. It's going to get real awkward and real uncomfortable because we're in the middle of that series, and we're going to applaud those people. Church doesn't happen without you, and so that's why we are thanking you today with a lunch. I know that's not enough, but that is what we can, we can do sometimes. And so um, that's today. Also, speaking of volunteers, since some, some of you didn't stand up, here's your opportunity to volunteer. Coming up soon is our VBS. Uh, our VBS is one of our greatest outreaches to our community. We have had thousands of kids over the years uh, come to our VBS. We typically have around 100 kids every single year coming to hear the message of Jesus Christ. Uh, we do a lot of fun, silly stuff up on the stage. And with those kids, we can't do it without you, without your volunteering help, without people. It, it's really impossible. If it was just me, it'd be impossible. Nothing would get done. It would look like this. Uh, and it would just be over. The stage would continue to look like this, and uh, I'd get up here and tell some funny jokes. Kids would maybe laugh, and they'd go, this is really boring, and they'd leave. Um, but with your help, with people that are willing to be teachers, people that are willing to do crafts, all those things. And so there are some key dates that you can see coming up. Um, and so what we are doing a little bit differently this year is you'll see on there there's a um, creativity meeting. Now that is for people who feel like they can help us start creating things for VBS ahead of time. So if you're like Annette who's super excited about that, that's for you. Come to that meeting. If you're thinking, man, I don't really know how to do any of that stuff, don't worry. That meeting's not for you. There's two other meetings that are for you. Um, and so uh, also you'll see on there we're doing two days, two different days of VBS training. We just ask that if you are volunteering in our VBS this year that you come to at least one of those days. Uh, one is on a Wednesday night at 6.30, which is our typical uh, men's and women's Bible study time. And so that week we're actually not going to be having those Bible studies. We're going to be doing VBS training. So if that's a time that you normally come, it's a great time to be here. And the other one is on a Saturday uh, from 10 to, t uh, 10 to 12. And... Um, so there's two options, and so we just ask that if you are going to be helping out in our VBS in any capacity, whether that's being a group leader, whether that's being a station leader, whether that's being a person who takes people's sign-ups, whether that's someone who delivers snacks, any of those things, we would just ask that you come to one of those VBS trainings uh, because we just have some, we're doing a little bit of a different VBS this year, and so we want to go over some of those things with you, uh, make sure that everyone's on the same page. So those are some of the things going on in the life of our church. 
Um, there's a lot of other things going on. Like I said, follow us on Instagram, follow us on Facebook. Sign up for our weekly email update. It tells you everything that we're doing. And so uh, those are, that's it. So if you're able to today, if you wouldn't mind standing, we're going to continue to sing and praise uh, uh, God in this, in this time and in this space. And I'm just going to pray for us as we, as we kind of get back into that. And so, Heavenly Father, we just thank you for the opportunity we have to come and be a part of your church, to be a part of something that was established thousands of years ago that still exists today. God, to be a part of something bigger than ourselves that can reach out into this community, that can impact the lives of people, of children, uh, and different things. God, we thank you so much for our volunteers. We wouldn't be able to do anything uh, here without them, God, and so we thank you so much that you um, provide people who are willing to serve your church, to serve this community. Uh, So we pray this in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen.
Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? You know, I just got a, I got a brand new pair of hearing aids, and I can hear you good, and I can even hear myself better than I used to. I couldn't rem- I can't even think about last week when I was testing these hearing aids out. I hear birds singing. I haven't heard birds in so long. It was unbelievable. Now, I know it's been a couple of years since I, my wife has been bugging me about getting a hearing aid. And I thought, no, it's just, you know, what they told me was when I went down and had my ears tested, that the hearing loss in my ears is at the same frequency as a woman's voice. <laughs> I'm just telling you. I'm just saying. So <laughs> it was a <clears throat> kind of a shocker. When I got them all put in, and the first voice I heard was a woman's voice. <laughs> and it sounded pretty good, you know, I can, all i got to tell you. So I was, uh, I'm happy that I finally released my stubbornness and got the help that I needed. But I didn't stop there. I needed to, my vision was starting to give out a little bit, so I had to, had to go down and have my eyes tested and They said that I had to have a cataract surgery, so I'm on the list of getting that squared away. So all these things I'm telling you right now are things that I had to have done that I had been putting off and thinking that I don't really need this, but we we have to listen to the voices of those that love us the most, right? Which brings me to a point that uh, I heard something on the internet a couple of weeks ago. How many have heard of Alistair Big? He's a he's a big time preacher, big church, but he wrote, he said something in his in his uh, English accent that struck me really, really between the eyes and between the ears. And that is, he was talking about, you know, when we get to heaven. Nobody's going to be able to speak in the first person, saying, well, I did this and I did that. You're going to have to speak in the third person. He, he did it all. I'm here. If I'm, when I get to heaven, the only reason that we're going to be there is because of him, not because of anything we ever did. And he took, made a point of this when he said that, the thief on the cross, he says, when I get to heaven, i got to go up there and tell him, how did you get here? You didn't get saved. You didn't get baptized. You didn't understand the, the uh, doctrine of, of justification or sanctification. How did you do it? How did you get here? You remember, he said, when you get to, heaven, when you get to heaven, remember me 
And what did Jesus say? Today you will be with me in paradise. So that's the reason that we're there, that we get to be there, is because of, because of him. And I found a little something I sent out this morning with, for a couple people that comes out of Luke 14. So likewise, whoever, you, whoever of you does not forsake all that he has cannot be my disciple. Salt is good, but if the salt has lost its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is neither fit for the land nor for the dunghill, but man throw it out. He who has ears, let him hear. For the word of God. So with that, I want to know, does everybody have one of these? Or does a, so let's take your emblems and open them up. Because it was his, his body. His body was broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, he took the cup. And he said, this is the blood of the new covenant shed for you. So when you take it, do this in remembrance of him. Because every time you do, you proclaim the death of Christ. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. First of all, we thank you, just like the thief on the cross. I don't know how I'm going to make it. It's because of you. There's nothing we ever did and nothing I could ever do to do, deserve the salvation that you give me. Thank you for dying on the cross for us. Thank you that we have salvation in no other but Jesus Christ, our Lord, in whose name we pray. Amen. Good to see you here. Welcome to those of you who are worshiping with us online. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Fred, for leading us in that time of communion. Also, I mean, we're talking about all these, you know, Volunteer Appreciation Sunday. And we're just talking about our volunteers a lot this month. Uh, let's give it up for our worship team as well. Great job today. Yeah, so very good. And, and for those of you that don't know, uh, you know, uh, Tustin... This morning, man, uh, actually yesterday, we had to call him up real quick because my wife woke up uh, with strep throat and was in pain and sick. And, and so we were like, hey, are you available? And he said, yes. And we were like, yes. And so he was able to be here today and practice with our worship team this morning and bring it all together for us. And so we're so very thankful for him. For those of you that don't know Dustin, yeah, he's been here before. Yeah. If you, if you never got a chance to meet him, um, just a great, great young man and uh, a part of our church family uh, for a long time uh, through his grandfather, actually, uh, who is just one of our great elders of our church. And, um, and so Glenn, what Glenn Rhodes, his grandfather, was just a great, great, great man. And I was honored to be able to call him one of our elders as well as... Uh, just be able to minister and serve alongside him. And he was always so proud of Dustin and would talk to, talk to me about him all the time. And we're so very thankful, man, that you could be here and thankful you could be a part of our service today. Um, also, all of our other volunteers that are helping out around uh, up in our crow's nest, as well as 
serving uh, out in our gym. We have some of our, uh, our, our servants from Connection Cafe as well as our elders who are helping put together our meal today. Can we also thank our hospitality team and all those folks? Um, just means a lot. Speaking of hospitality team, I heard this morning there is a birthday out in the gym, actually. He's out there. He sits out there because he's got his sidekick, Matilda, uh, you know, his dog with him. And David Carruthers, can we just say happy birthday, David? <laughs> happy birthday, David. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's out there. So, man, uh, good Sunday. Good to be here with you. I'm excited about our message. This is week two of our series called Uncomfortable. And if you were here last week or you saw or, or, or heard uh, us kind of explain, maybe you saw our weekly email update and, and saw a little explanation in there, um, what this series is all about. Truth be told, our American culture that we live in, you already know this, I'm not telling you anything you don't already know, it's one of comfort, it's one that embraces comfort, usually above all things in fact, right? Uh, <clears throat> we all want to feel comfortable. When it comes to our lives, right, whether it's the clothes that we wear, the chairs that we sit in, right, uh, when it comes to our social environments and the people that we're around, we all want to feel comfortable when it comes to our lives. We're constantly encouraged. In fact, our culture will tell you all the time, right, just do what you want, how you want, whenever you want, to whomever you want, right, as long as you're not hurting someone, right, it's, that's kind of the, the mantra of our culture in many aspects and, and regards. And if it's something that's uncomfortable, our culture will say, hey, avoid that at all costs. And so in this series, um, that's kind of what we're, we're exploring. In fact, many researchers say that part of the reason why people choose things like not being a part of a church, why they choose not to be a part of a Christian community, or they struggle with their faith at times, or lack thereof, right, are due to factors of comfort, right? It's why we addressed last week in our opening message of this series. For many people, it begins with, their belief or their lack of trust in God. That's where, for a lot of people, the uncomfortableness really begins. Um, whether it means trusting in God with your life, uh, whether it means trusting in God with your family, whether it means believing and trusting in God with your marriage or your finances or even our very futures, for some people, this is a big, big hang up. And the challenge throughout this series. Throughout everything we're going to be talking about over the next several weeks is whether or not you're willing, whether or not I'm willing to embrace the uncomfortableness at times, which we talked about, is very, very countercultural. But are you willing to embrace the uncomfortable for discovering that which is even greater? Because once again, the truth is, the problem with comfort when it comes to the Bible, when it comes to God's Word, it can be very counterproductive for us as followers of Jesus. In fact, many of the things, and we're going to see this today, that Jesus said from his teachings to the parables that he told, they were actually designed 